G'day guys, it's Galvin, Gadget Company New Zealand. Coming to you from my garage. Uh, I got two locations where I do lots of work. Uh, here at home, and at the workshop. The difference being here at home, I don't have to wear pants. Now, I've got a, this little box arrived, uh, well labeled to me, nice and secure. Uh, there was some wrapping on it, and inside, was a, a 3UZ powered vehicle to ECU. And for a change, it's not an LS430 or a Celsius or a Crown. It's, it's the other one. Oh, GS430, it's not one of those either. I like, I like a Crown. It's a, now I, I started off, actually, sorry. Um, I started off saying it was a SC430. It turns out it's a Sora. If you look at the number, um, that's the ECU number, normal. 2.4 being Sora or SC platform. It's been the same since the early 90s, so it's really easy to remember, and that's the ECU number. As you can see, it's already connected up to my test bench. Already connected into the ECU, uh, into the PC, into the laptop, and I've extracted the calibration number from it. So it's got the ECU number there, and the calibration number there that for the firmware that's in this ECU. So I've jumped and I've grabbed that. Uh, of course, I opened it up to have a look at it first, which is really important because I don't want to reflash something that's no good. When I talk about the calibration file, or we can call it a firmware file, because there are actually, even within the same part numbers, there are different calibration files, different firmwares, and they can respond a little bit differently. I've also suck the um, codes out of it, the uh, di diagnostic trouble codes. There's a lot in there because there's no engine attached. There's, I'm on my bench at home, so no engine. I'm gonna check that calibration file. We're gonna check that it can be reflashed. Man's also given me a little note on his ECU with his details, and he's also put, can I supply a new AVIS solenoid? Uh, either, either ACIS or AVIS is fine for me. Um, labeled it up, checked it, reflash, make car go better. And he's obviously been watching my videos and checked that the um, ACIS isn't working. So this is all fantastic stuff. And this is how I do most of my ECUs. I do most of them just receiving the ECUs. However, I did do one the other day. I showed a video of doing one, reflashing the ECU in the motor vehicle when I did an update on another one that we're, we're working on. All right, let's get in. Let's get this uh, checked and reflashed, and I'll come back to you soon with an update. Right, I thought I might just look at something that it's interest to me, because so many computers, when we're looking at um, the part numbers, only fit specific models. So, for example, an LS430 ECU doesn't fit a Celsius. Crown ECUs generally don't fit GS430s and vice versa. Let's have a bit of a squiz in here and I'm going to tap all of these buttons. Um, this is a site that I use a lot. I use it nearly every day. And it's available to everyone. I should be an advocate for it. Uh, I'm not getting paid in any way. Um, I just find it a fantastic site because of the cross-reference. I'm in the cross-reference. You can use the vehicle identification as well to go through and put your vehicle in. If you've got a VIN, you can put that in. Um, so here I am putting in the ECU part number, and we're going to go like that. And notice I, I just tick all the boxes. That's important, because of course if I tick a Celsius, it's not going to be in the North American market, is it? Because it's a Japanese car. LS430, on the other hand, may come across the range. Watch what happens when I do this one, though. Um, and so it brings up Japan. Uh, 2001 to 2010, which is interesting. Um, SC430 and Toyota Sora, and a UZZ40. Now you click on the little blue thing, and so that same car can be badged as an SC430 or a Sora, which is quite interesting. Uh, this being a Japanese one. Well, let's see if we can find if the North American one 
if he's a North American SC. So we'll go in the middle of that range. Uh, down for Lexus. SC430. Oh, I did funny things. Try again. That was a fail. Go away, Eds. I don't like you. So there we also have a US SC430. I'm going to scroll down. And you'll notice when I go in here, I've got uh, pictures. If you don't have pictures, you need an invite. Okay, um, I've got some mates who have uh, kindly given me extra invites. I've got like nine left because I've had that many people onto the site and help them out. But I've got some other guys if you're uh, using it. Uh, I'm trying to find the. No, not. I'm going to go to this one. And you notice I've got pictures, and that's what you need that invite for. And over here, we'll probably find that there are some different ECU numbers. So there's some different ECU. Taiwan spec. 701 and 710. And notice that one's only badged as an SC430, and that's this is um, interesting for this model of car. Something that just one of that useless bit of information that's gone into my head. Okay, <laughs> it's been a big day, and I picked up the ECU and I was in a bit of a hurry, and I flicked a tune file into it. So, what does the owner of this vehicle expect? Well, what should he expect? Uh, so what I've chosen for this particular job um, is what we call our full send ECU, TCU. Um, so we're going to give them better throttle response. Get rid of some of that lag that these 3UZs often have. We're going to give him a bit sharper shift. And we're going to give him um, a little bit more power. We're going to just tidy up the way the transmission or when it shifts like the kick down quality of that shift um, I've also got rid of the sub auction sensors so if the catalytic converters want to be removed or puts a different exhaust on it no problem we can do that um, and that's not going to affect the tune of it at all um, and we've also done it in, in two modes so in the normal mode it'll feel a little bit better it'll feel a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer, maintain fuel economy like it was with just a little bit nicer shift. And then he'll hit the power button and he'll really notice a difference. It will, it's like a push to pass button on a race car, really goes quite a bit nicer. It's going to be a fun little car to drive and I'm pretty sure he'll be happy and um, doing that um, ACIS. Solar 2 is going to help it a lot. So that one's going in a box, going back home. But I'll show you very quickly on, a, on another one. I'm doing a test ECU here. We'll just show you the reflashing process just really quickly, just so you get a bit of an idea of what we're doing. So here I have an ECU connected up. Laptop dongle program. And I will push the right button, right here, right. And it's gonna ask me to do a series of things. You'll notice that the uh, little dongle here, or the adapter is going to flash. Maybe that's why they call it flashing. And basically it'll load a new program in. Not the best time to do a video when I'm trying to concentrate, but um, guys can't do two things at once, can we? we? Well, we can, but we just don't do either of them very well. So it's going to load a new file in, change the parameters in that ECU to give us the changes that we want and make it go better. We are constantly doing developments as well and trying to make them go better. Associates around the world. So it isn't just me, of course. Um, I couldn't do this stuff on my own. Um, it's a group. Uh, we've got Yuri in Russia. We've got uh, all for swap. 
Uh, so here uh, we've got quantum autos, quantum auto tuning in the USA with Brandon. We've got Chris at Phoenix Engine Management in the UK. So all of us use the same stuff. We're all working together to make your ECUs go better. Now, if you've got some questions, click them in those comments. Um, and you can see that we do all of the three UZ powered vehicles. And we do, I do the odd Hilux and a high ace um, with a mobile immobilizer removal. Um, in this particular case, we've chosen to, I've left the immobilizer in there, so it's going to be just like a factory car. It's just going to go a whole lot better. Right, I need to focus on what I'm doing with this one. I hope that's been helpful. We'll see you again soon. Catch you later.